Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Marissa and you're watching Life After the Fontan. If you're new here, I'm a 24 year old, soon to be 25, documenting my life living with complex congenital heart disease. In today's video, we're going to be talking about implantable loop recorders. Let's get started. <music> an implantable loop recorder since August of 2014. But what is an implantable loop recorder? It's a type of heart monitoring device that records your heart rhythm continuously for up to three years, sometimes even longer. What it does is record the electrical signals of your heart, so the EKG, and allows for remote monitoring by means of a small device implanted in your chest wall just below the skin. I have a Reveal Link implantable loop recorder. So why do I have a loop recorder? When I was a senior in high school, so about 17 years old, I fainted I, and um, we really didn't know why. A few months later, I underwent a cardiac cath and, and that wasn't really remarkable. They didn't see anything unusual. So my cardiologist felt like the best action plan for me was to have this loop recorder put in so that way if I were to have an episode similar to that again we would be able to see what my heart rhythm was at the time and see if that was a contributing factor to my fainting episode. This monitor has been really really helpful in the past seven years I guess in um, ruling out a lot of the bad things I guess you could say. So really what it does is I could be at home, I could be really anywhere, and I could experience a weird sensation in my chest, the palpitation, which would be indicative of an arrhythmia or an abnormal beat within your heart. I, I'm able to send over a transmission, which we will talk about further on, and my cardiologist is able to see a seven minute span, five minutes before I press the button and two minutes after, to see what was going on with my heart at that time. Was it dangerous? Was it okay? What was happening? And to be quite honest, it's really been fine all of these years. This monitor does record continuously and my doctor is able to put in certain parameters. So if my heart gets above a certain number of beats per minute for too long, if I experience arrhythmia such as atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, I'm sure ventricular tachycardia, all of those things, it will something over to my cardiologist as long as I'm within six and a half feet of this box. So again, thankfully I haven't had any dangerous arrhythmias since having this placed in August of 2014. However, I really think that it's probably cut down on a lot of unnecessary emergency room trips, which I definitely don't want to be doing at any point, but especially now during a pandemic. And I think it has also cut down on unnecessary halter monitors, the external monitors where you put the stickers on your chest and wear it for a day, two days, a week, a month, all of that. So this has really been quite a bit of a lifesaver for me. So we talked a little bit about why I have it and what it really is and what it does. Let's talk about the insertion process though. How does it get in there in the first place? So I had one placed in August of 2014 and then I had that one taken out and a new one put in in April of 2018 just because mine had died. It has a three year battery life. Mine lasted nearly four years though so that can um, vary of course. So I have always been told that this procedure can take place in an office setting because it's really minimally invasive. However, for both of my recorders, they've been implanted in the cardiac cath lab with uh, twilight anesthesia. So I'm awake and I'm breathing on my own, but I don't remember anything from either of my two insertions. They'll so they'll cut that very small incision on your chest wall and then they actually use an insertion device to kind of place something in that incision and then make a little track for the monitor to go into and then they push the monitor through get it implanted into the skin and then they take it right out so it's super easy it's really right below the skin i can feel my monitor especially if i'm laying on my back sometimes i can even see it following the insertion process uh, the recovery for that i would say i was sore for maybe a week ish each time nothing that a little tylenol couldn't handle though 
So let's talk about your life with an implantable loop recorder at home. So I have two external devices that go hand in hand with my loop recorder. The first one is this white box, it's a transmitter. Um, and the second one is this little buddy, a patient assistant keychain. So this transmitter has two parts, the base and then, I don't really know what you would call this. So this guy is really what sends the information over to your cardiologist. The monitor inside of your chest or my chest records that information and sends it over here. And then this thing has the capability of sending it over to Philadelphia for me to send to my cardiologist. A few things to note with this, it should not be plugged into a wall outlet that is controlled by a switch. If the switch is accidentally turned off, this thing can be off for weeks and I would have no clue until I'm going to use it again and realize I can't. Something else important is that it really can't be placed too close to your phone. What I remember reading is that it had to be at least like five or six feet from your phone at night. However, it's also supposed to be within six and a half feet of where you sleep at night. So what I have done, I keep this under my bed. I kind of snake it down and put it near my feet. So it's far enough away from my phone, but it's close enough to me. And then every 24 hours, for me it's at midnight, my thing, if it notices anything abnormal, will send over a, a transmission to my cardiologist. Now I can also send a manual transmission using this. So what you'll see here on the screen the top corner you can see the battery life, below that you can see the Wi-Fi connection, as you can see the date when the last transmission was sent. First I want to talk about our patient assistant. The patient assistant, what it allows you to do is mark your symptoms throughout the day if you're feeling something abnormal. So for instance, I can send over a manual transmission which, with this, however, if I'm at work or if I'm at the store or someone else's house or literally anywhere else except for my house, I can't use this because I'm not with it. And if I'm not home within five minutes, it's not going to catch the abnormal symptom that I felt. What this thing does is it allows me to press this little button. You can see that it then blinks blue. So that means it's ready to do its job. You put it up to your monitoring device and then it makes that beep when it has marked that spot. So now with this patient assistant, it will mark five minutes prior to me pressing that button and two minutes following. You can see that when, it, um, when it's complete, it has that green dot on it. So again, say I'm at Target, something's not right, and I press this button. I get home that night, and either if I'm in my bed at midnight, it'll send over to my cardiologist then, or if I wanna know sooner, I press that button, I come home, and then I come over to my manual transmitter and I pick up the remote on the top and I'll press the gray button on this and I will hold this over my recorder. So this will just depict the monitor sitting on top of my recorder. You're not supposed to talk during this. Nothing is wrong right now. So we're gonna call this one um, like an educational transmission. <laughs> Um, you can see the bar at the top fills green as it is completing its uh, transmission recording. You will see. So we'll just give it a minute. Alright, so then those two beeps signify that you are able to then put the little device on top of the box. And then what will be depicted is my actual box that I'm holding right now, sending over that information to my cardiologist. Again, there's another bar at the top that will fill green as it's sending over. So that's really the biggest stuff for my loop recorder. So there are actually a few things that I have to think about outside in the community with this implanted monitor. So the first one is that I have restrictions on types of metal detectors that I'm able to walk through. So if you've ever been in the airport and they have two metal detectors there, there's always the one that you just walk on through and then it beeps or it doesn't beep and you're good. There's also the other one where you go, you stand in it, you put your arms up and then these two big things like whoosh around you like that. Um, so that one, the big whooshing one, is the one I'm fine with. It's the one that you just walk through that I'm not able to go through. 
So this can be challenging because it's not only at airports, it's really in a lot of places. They can be found at sporting events. I know I've had to go through them to go into a baseball game, to go into a football stadium for a concert. They are literally in the lobby of the emergency room that I go to. Um, so I always have to tell the security guard there that I'm not able to walk through the metal detector and instead it would be better if I could be patted down or wanted. I also have restrictions on types of MRI machines I'm able to have tests done in. To my understanding, there are certain Tesla levels in MRI machines. I think it talks about the strength, really. So I can't be in the really strong ones. I have to be in one that is lower Tesla. Um, I sure hope I'm saying that appropriately. That, that really hasn't caused too many changes for me. I just use a less strong MRI machine. So that is all that I have for you guys today. I hope that really covered all of the bases related to implantable loop recorders from what it is, why somebody would have it, how it's put in and what you do with it at home and things you have to look out for like the MRI machine, the metal detector, the light switches, controlling the transmitter, things like that. Um, truly, it has really greatly improved my life, I think, just because it's really been a cost-saving device. It has kept me out of the emergency room and has been able to allow me to just send a transmission and call my cardiologist to make sure something is okay. I think I forgot to say this at the beginning, but if you like this video, please like it down below, subscribe to my channel, feel free to leave any comments down below, and turn on your notification bell so that way you can be one of the first to watch my upcoming videos. I think that's all I have for you guys, so stay tuned for my next video. Bye!